Um, I just is glyphosate an organophosphate? Well, it's not. I don't think it's classified as such. But because it certainly has. It's an organic and it's well because one of. Phosphate. I mean, several years ago, I made a film about organophosphates, and one of the problems they used a lot in agriculture, and the person who pioneered the research was a farmer. And the, um, it was very difficult to get data because all the cases were isolated farm workers. But one of the issues was that it was an accumulator, that it comes in all different sort of substances. And you get a dose from, you know, your moth killer, your pesticide, your, you know, so that it's not just coming at you from one source and as your body can't shed it. So is that similar with glyphosate? Well, I think, I, yeah. I think they don't call it a uh, an organic phosphate, but it it but the main thing is the usage of it is so much higher than anything else. Okay. And because Monsanto keeps saying they still saying that it is the safest thing okay. that you can use. And uh, at one point I don't know if they still say it, it is safer than table salt basically. Than table salt. There have been a couple of papers, I think, describing it functioning as an organophosphate with neurotoxin in fish. Yeah. There's a couple and of there's nothing, fish, there's it's nothing not described as an organophosphate. Yeah. But there's nothing about the incremental effect of this. So the body, it's, certainly, you know. it's certainly accumulates in the body. That's exactly what is, is, uh, is being discovered. Mm -hmm. Belatedly, you know, the, but still, you know, the... the the American authorities, the regulatory agencies, are not even measuring it. Mm -hmm. All the data that has come out, you know, has been done by the National Geographical Society of the United States. It's not by the EPA or the USDA. They pointedly omit to measure this, and especially in an, in, in, a, in a, an area where they have been finding these horrible birth defects. Mm. Um, and because somebody has dumped something, quite quite a lot of glyphosate into the river. Of, oh, in America. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they still didn't want to measure it. Mm. So that that's because they say it's safe, you know. Mm. 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 Yeah, you 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 could answer Hugo from yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, just just say I, I I'm quite aware of that thing which was planned to be in Morocco and. Generally, I think it was fantastic idea, and I read about it, and, and like so many companies, I thought it was, was an absolutely fantastic idea, uh, because you could actually export something from Morocco, and it's a whole, all of North African state, uh, states, you know, Tunisia, etc., and you can actually create local employment, etc., wealth, and so on and so forth, you've got something to, to export which we would need. However, because of um, all that sort of um, wars and uncertainty now created, I would imagine, uh, that was barely not possible, and the company's just gone bust. I don't know if you ever follow that. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's completely gone. It's not even a month ago I read it. Three weeks ago, completely pulls a plug on it, and, and there's maybe something on local level. And what in Morocco is quite actually nice, in a way, is that they actually started to have a feed-in tariff. So the Moroccan government is actually quite incredibly forward-thinking. And now we see what's happening with today's election in Tunisia, how that actually translates. And they may do something like that because, like um, my colleague said earlier, because now even in African land countries you have local networks, etc. Exactly. So it, it will be so, certainly something good coming out of it. But I don't think that Europe's going to benefit of that. But right in the meantime, European uh, energy has really increased tremendously. So particularly in Germany, again, when we're talking about not measuring something. In, in England, then now you get data saying X amount, you know, you this fantastic website which gives you how much electricity is produced by who at what day, which is complete nonsense. Because you haven't got enough data points to this, to distinguish between renewable, nuclear, solar power, whatever. So the point is that the, the grid doesn't put enough units into measure because I just don't want you to know where the energy comes from. It all comes from a packet and then you actually have to go via data you get via claimants and you actually retrospectively you can know how much power there has been produced. Germany is doing completely different in what I, a graph again which I couldn't show and it shows basically the solar power and wind uh, complement a complement each other to a certain degree, and B, it actually follows the consumption line. So during the day you have like a wave which goes up, so does the solar. 
and it follows always the same. So that's why every time of the day, of, of the day at least two, two, um, uh, at least one third of of the German electricity consumption is generated by by renewable because it follows exactly the same pattern. And nice get down. And on the weekend we have huge huge amount. So we wouldn't need any more. Uh, energy from Sahara because that was the big idea from the desert to get energy up because they thought let me turn off the look there's a lights will go out and they've been proven wrong again and again and again we exceed the renewable industry in Germany exceed every time it's prediction we they have doubled only 10 years ago it was predicted 12 percent now we got 28 it's 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 crazy and it just uh, goes on. small Question about that. Yeah. Uh, instead to go if you, th if you think that there is an alternative for the situation in, in the Sahara, I know very well the situation. Um, um, then why not to use the southern countries of Europe in the middle of the brutal recession economy with the austerity? So you think the, the, the capacity of generate solar energy in Spain, Italy, and Greece, and to transport this energy in a very certainty uh, democratic state? The, the thing is, it's not the technological problem. It really is political and you create uncertainty in Italy they had to feed themselves and they went out again Spain all of a sudden they should get taxed for producing their own energy you create uncertainty and that basically uh, companies don't invest and that's basically you have to create a certain framework that's why the feed-in tariff is a very cruel tool and there's a lot wrong with the feed-in tariff as it was introduced in Germany but it's a lot it kick-started an economy which now is completely self-sufficient so, um, yeah. Uh, right, uh, yes, uh, you, you, and uh, you, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, can you keep them short? We're running on to time now at the moment. Yeah, yeah, um, sorry. Just in terms of glyphosate, have there been any studies? I think, is it Paris and Rotterdam are now kind of pesticide free? I understand. And has there been any research into kind of the effects, like the converse of what happens when you build it up, but also what, you have, what happens when you kind of reduce it down in cities? Like, and also, can you? How do you get glyphosate testing? Like, if you were going to get a group of people that were going to get samples taken, like from their urine or something, is there a lab? Like, how do you get that done as a kind of to see how much we've all got in? Our... Answer is yes. Okay. Yes. Um, should, should I answer it quickly? Yeah. 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 Uh, remember, uh, all our speakers will be around for a short while to talk as well. So uh, after. So yeah. yeah. There's a current article on the website showing that the Danish farmer. As soon as he stopped using soy, uh, glyphosate uh, contaminated soy, feed his uh, pigs organic soy, everything, all the problems disappear. And he's got amazing data showing a correlation be between the uh, rate of birth defects, you know, the amount of uh, piglets per pig and things like that correlated with the amount of glyphosate in the feed. And the second one, sorry, is um, the testing. Oh, the testing. Yeah, there, there is a um, test that relies on ELISA. You know, a kind of a, a color test. And uh, some people are producing a kind of a stick test that could be used very quickly. And I think it's that's a very good idea. Unfortunately there still isn't a very good way of removing glyphosate from the, from the water. That is still under research. But there are already remediating, um, soils are being remediated uh, because they are in the, in the United States and many farmers going back to, the, to growing non-GM crops. And glyphosate has ruined their soil, but it can now be remediated and so all, all kinds of very active research are going on. Um, okay. <clears throat> very briefly, one of the things that's generally said is that the problem with renewables, mostly photo, uh, photovoltaic and wind, is that they're intermittent. The sun doesn't always shine, the wind doesn't always blow. The way you get around that is with batteries. <clears throat> now, th there are other methods, but the battery one is coming along very well. What, you don't see too much of is that battery technology, really modern stuff, this, this is really cutting edge science, never mind nuclear, that's 50 years old, 60 years old, this is really cutting edge science. And they're developing new batteries, there's one called a flow battery, 
which is already in use in a number of places, including Japan. And if you read your Financial Times this morning, has anybody read the Financial Times? <laughs> there, there is a, an American firm that has just developed a lithium-ion battery, which has two properties. One of them is it doesn't burst into flames, which is what's <laughs> the big ones. And secondly, they've charged it and discharged it 40,000 times, and it's as good as when they started. And if you know from your computer, that doesn't normally happen. So the problem of intermittency is just about solved. And watch this space. That's where science is going, and things are getting better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Was the name of the battery again, please? Flow, flow something? There's a flow, ba it's a flow, flow battery. battery. This is all on the uh, on the ISIS website. All on the ISIS website. <laughs> no, and ISIS have some uh, yeah, lithium ion. Is no, lithium ion is and uh, we're going. Oh yes, yeah. I didn't promise you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Don't touch that. A point of information. Centre for Alternative Technology has been um, working on zero carbon Britain for at least 10 years, and they have a free, uh, you can download it free from their website, Centre for Alternative Technology, cat.org.uk. What can you do? The Zero Carbon Britain, it's a, it's a paper which, which um, explains exactly how the whole of Britain can and become zero, zero carbon. And if I'm not mistaken, they actually year. support uh, nuclear goal. They, they update the, it every year. Uh, um, okay, I hope they're, they're still no, they're only, not supporting nuclear anymore. No, 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 no. They, 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 I went to the book launch. Yes. Carbon it's, nuclear. it's a book. It, it's fantastic. Okay. But they didn't put a timetable on it. Yeah. And then that's why a lot they're of people... They're looking let at the economics currently, because they've been working on it for, for 10 years. It's brilliant. No, yeah, it's yeah. Really, a lot of work has gone into it. No, it's fantastic. Oh, that's good. And oh. we had to finish, I'm afraid, um, I, I, Rose, my life. Oh, this isn't a question, this is, um, well, apart from the fact, has, has everybody signed in with their emails? Yes, yes, sorry. This we one. can share information if you haven't on that. Um, there is a website, or two websites, that show um, current, the electricity grid in Britain um, uh, in real time, uh, five minute intervals, and um, one of them is a little bit more, um, understandable than the other, but the other's got a lot of background information about um, the power coming from France and the Netherlands and how limited that is um, and um, how, how much is nuclear, whatever. Um, and, and you may have seen that um, in Britain, uh, partly due to problems in nuclear systems, so that, so that various power stations have been shut down, but that um, this month uh, wind power was actually higher than nuclear power uh, for, for most of this current month. And it's um, there's little graphs where you can yeah. see, you know, today, last week, last month, last year. Um, I can't remember the website, so I will email everybody with Great. these two Thanks. names Thanks. and you can waste yeah. some time looking at it. But yeah. also inform yourselves on <laughs> how it works. Yeah. And, we run ten minutes over time, which wasn't yeah. your fault. Uh, uh, it was we stopped at ten minutes late. Um, thanks for everyone for coming, particularly Dr. Eva and Maywan and uh, Jürgen and uh, Stephen. And uh, thanks to, as I say, everyone for coming, and to Stephen, Rosemary, and my granddaughter for giving us. So uh, this is our second Green Party meeting this week, and it's only Tuesday. Um, and with, um, there's loads of leaflets at the back if anyone wants to take some. It'll save my back having to go all the home again. Uh, and I think the wine is uncorked. The wine is all uncorked next door. The uh, speakers will be uh, staying on so you can have a chat with them. And thanks very much, Carmen. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, and I'm going to do something very nasty now. Uh, you don't run away. Uh, 
The next one is the 20th of November, and we have one of the speakers here. Do you want to say a quick word? Sorry, but I haven't told you. I was going to do this. Sorry. This is Hugh Small. And I'm Hugh Small. I'm a member of the West, London, West Central London Group, and my uh, contribution relates to the new localism uh, features of the uh, devolution of power to local authorities. A lot of people regard this with some scepticism. It's, they think it's not a thing that's very English. The, the uh, powers that be in Westminster have an, in, have an interest in making sure it doesn't work, etc., etc. But the fact of the matter is that historically there's a great precedent for this. It happened in 1871 when public health was devolved to local authorities and that was followed by the most dramatic rise in life expectancy in any country anywhere in the world. Life expectancy in Britain uh, increased by 50% from 40 years at birth to 60 years at birth over a period of about 60 years when medical science contributed nothing at all. And it was all done by local authorities implementing uh, uh, public health measures, which have their... Well, in those days, it was the big problem was the health of buildings. Now... The big, that problem has more or less been solved, and the problem is the health of streets. You're all familiar with the inactivity pandemic, and the fact of the matter is that this has grown partly, along with a lot of other social problems, because we've had the most centralised government in the developed world that is completely incapable of dealing with it. it can only think of one-size-fits-all policies. Anyway, so my talk is about exactly how that mechanism happens of devolution and uh, and innovation in solving social problems and how it can be applied today and the various methods and working groups that are working on it today. So I've practically given my presentation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, Hugh. I had, I had warned him that I was going to say, uh, sorry, uh, we'll have two other good speakers as well. So uh, have a drop of wine in there and enjoy yourself and talk to uh, one another or whatever. No, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Yeah. We are going to be a